Now then, Jabbers, how the devil are you? Excellent. Yes, me too. Thanks for asking. Welcome to my first Q&A then. Because we're trying to make this channel a little bit more about health and fitness and me trying to inspire you to do something a little bit different with your, your health and your fitness, I thought I would do a question and answer session about getting started. Where do you begin? What is it that maybe gives you some motivation, that kind of stuff? So you guys have been asking questions galore and we're gonna have a look through them and see what I've got to say to some of the answers. So my first questions come from Luke, who's also on YouTube, but asked these on Facebook, on the Facebook group. His first question was, which foods should be avoided? That's a really difficult question to answer because it depends what you're trying to achieve with your diet. What I would suggest though, for anybody who's looking seriously at their health and their fitness, is when you first begin, whether it being doing loads of exercise or trying to lose weight, whatever you're trying to do, is look at what your diet currently is. Do yourself a food diary, write down everything that you're currently doing, and it gives you a chance after about two or three weeks to, to look through it and go actually what am I not having enough of am I drinking enough water or am I eating too many crisps am I drinking too much alcohol it just gives you that list so that you can look at it and you can go you know what this is where I need to progress to this is what I need to change to make a difference to my diet it's far better to do that and then worry about what it is that you're doing in excess or not enough of than worrying about actually what are the ideal foods for a diet because there's lots of different things that you could do with a diet you could be looking to gain weight you could be looking to lose weight for me personally i look to try and maintain what i have and then work around that to do different things so i have a specific maintenance level for my calorie intake and then i can go right okay i want to bulk up i know i need to do more on the food side of that i want to lose weight i want to try and rip up i know i need to eat less calories and work out my macros around that so there's there's a lot of science in it but the main thing for anybody who's brand new to health and fitness and looking to maybe change their diet a little bit is do a food diary that's the best place to start he then asks what are the best exercises to lose love handles oh, now that's a difficult one again and it kind of boils down to diet rather than exercise there are a lot of exercises you can do to build up the core strength around that area you can do side bends you could do side planks you could do lateral pull down so that you're actually building up your your back so you, you get the wingspan out that kind of stuff to not overly emphasize the love handles but the main thing is your diet when it comes to exercise and trying to look the way a lot of people want to look the main thing that you want to do is look at your diet first it's 80 percent diet 20 percent exercise of which that 20 percent exercise some of it is up in your head as well it really is your diet is so important your diet is like the be all and end all and then everything else fits around that. However, if you're looking to just do health and fitness and just be a stronger, healthier person, that's a really good thing as well. Don't always think that exercise has to follow on to losing weight. It doesn't. Sometimes it's just about making sure your heart's a little bit healthier. I don't want it to be a case of always that you look at exercise as a way of losing weight. Sometimes it's just about being a little bit fitter. And then Luke also asks, what exercises are really effective for people who are busy and can't get to the gym? There's all sorts of stuff you could do running, cycling, swimming obviously does require a gym but is a fantastic workout you don't have to go into the gym and lift weights you could do some swimming which is good for your back muscles if you're doing the backstroke it's good for your shoulders if you're doing the crawl your chest your legs everything is working I don't know if you've ever swam recently but for me whenever I go swimming I get home and I am absolutely shattered it's a really great exercise so if you can do swimming brilliant if you can't get out there do some walking some fat leg running which is running and walking just solid running if you're fit enough to do that it all depends on what you're trying to achieve yourself and what your ultimate goal is but definitely there's loads of stuff you can do just get yourself out there go walking in the hills whatever you can do I mean Susanna we've gone on and started doing geocaching which is a bit of fun so you get out there you're walking five or six miles at a time and you're searching for little treasure hunt stuff as well which is pretty cool Okay, here's a good question on YouTube on the video that I asked for questions on. Bosis asks, what is a good way or the best way you found to cool down from an exercise session, apart from jumping in an ice bath, which I used to be made to do back when I was a decathlete? I would suggest, definitely, without a doubt, always, always, always say, make sure you stretch at the end of whatever routine you're doing, whether it be body balance classes, aerobics, whether you've been on a bike, whether you've been for a walk, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure 
you do a good stretch afterwards. Just stretching is so important. It helps release the lactic acids in your muscles, improves your flexibility, improves your mobility, and just generally will make you a much healthier person. Oh, I cannot get over how important stretching actually is to you. It just is the be all and end all at the end of a session. It really, really is. Make sure you do it. It gives your body a really good chance to cool down, gets rid of that lactic so that the next day you're not suffering from DOMS as badly as you would normally. Trust me, it really is important. And in fact, in one of the videos in the future, I will go through a really good stretching routine for you, for you that you could do at the end of any session that you're doing. It doesn't take long, maybe 15, 20 minutes, but it is so important. Okay, another question from YouTube is from Emma Louise Marwood, who says, I really want to get back into running. I really do. However, the days are getting shorter and damper, so I just stay in instead. What kind of motivation would you advise? That is such a difficult question, Emma. It is possible to get over this bit of a slump that you might be in at the moment that you're thinking, I don't really want to go out and do this. I can't be bothered. Just give yourself a bit of a goal. Have a look at maybe something for next year, early next year. So maybe January or February. Look to try and find a road race or something that you could do. And I know you took part in Race for Life recently. So try and look for something of a similar ilk, around about 5K that you could train up to. And it just gives you a chance to get out there and do some running. Another really great way of doing this is finding a running club. They do cater to people of all stages of skill. So you could be a 15 minute 5k runner, in which case you go off with a fast group, or you could be a 40 minute 5k runner, so go off with a slow group. That's a really great way to get yourself fit, give yourself a bit more social life as well, which is really cool. You get out and meet new people, and yeah, they're always really nice and welcoming at rug uh, rugby clubs, at running clubs. So get yourself out to a running club, I would definitely recommend that. And things like park run on a weekend, completely free. They happen all over the world now. I don't know if they've got any in America yet, but I know they're probably coming if they're haven't already that pretty much everywhere Australia most of Europe but definitely in the UK find a park run on a Saturday it's a completely free 5k run normally sponsored by local businesses and also one big sponsor as well and they're really great fun really really cool and you get an official time that you can try and beat as a PB the week after awesome okay and my last question for today is from Yorkshire vlogger it's a little bit more of a personal one he asks me what motivated you to get fit right okay long story short and it is a really long story so I'm gonna cut it short when I was younger I was a decathlete I was training for the Sydney Olympics at least trying to qualify for it and I got quite a severe injury to my knee I tore my cruciate ligament doing high jump and yeah I lost my sponsors I lost motivation and my injury lasted a lot longer than I was kind of hoping for it to do so. So I fell out of love with athletics, I fell away from athletics, I stopped coaching, I stopped competing and that was that. I moved down south to Newbury with my job and my diet went big time. I started eating chocolate every day, I was drinking fizzy drinks every day, I was going for easy foods, I was going for fast foods, I was eating McDonald's almost every single day. It was just horrific. I was just eating the worst diet ever and I was essentially turning my organs into pate is all I can really kind of put it as and I was putting on weight and I wasn't really even noticing it either. That's the worst part is that when you don't notice it, it, it really is a bad thing and I one day was walking up the stairs into my bedroom I was renting a room in the house and I put on the TV and a lot of people I know were doing the world championship athletics I just sat down I thought I'm sweating walking up the stairs and there they are doing their thing on TV competing with the best of the best in the world why is that not me and that was a trigger point for me I suddenly started getting weighed on the scales I noticed I was 145 kilos at my heaviest which is pretty high and I decided enough was enough I can't just keep walking up the stairs and sweating and having a bad diet I changed literally instantly that moment I stopped drinking fizzy drinks I stopped eating chocolate I lost two and a half stone in two weeks the weight just dropped off me because I was having such a bad diet my body just went ah, no sugar <sighs> and I lost loads of weight. And then I contacted my local athletics club as well at the same time. They said, come along and compete for us. I did do, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I missed athletics big time. And so I got right back into it. I started coaching again and now I am where I am. I never ever will let myself get into that shape again. I enjoy keeping fit. 
I have my 39th birthday on January the 1st next year, so I have some challenges that I want to set myself for my 40th year. I'd love you guys to set me some challenges as well, but I'm going to do the three peaks. I'm going to do another decathlon. I am very tempted as well to do a triathlon, and I need one for every single month. So if you could come up with some ideas for me, that would be pretty awesome. Leave them in the section below. And also, is there anything you would like me to do a question and answer session on? Thank you very much for all your questions today. Let me know in the section below if there's anything you'd like me to do a question and answer session on and I will see you guys next time but keep watching the vlogs thanks for watching